do you think one day it'll be possible to simulate the full history that mm -hmm. took our solar system to what it is today? Yes, and it will be useless. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't think your story, many of the ideas that you have about Jupiter clear in the space, like retelling that story in high resolution is not that important? I actually think it's important, but at every stage you have to you have to simulate you have to design your experiments your your numerical computer experiments so that they test some specific aspect gotcha. of that evolution Got it. um i am not a proponent of doing huge simulations because um even if we forget the information theory aspect of not being able Mm -hmm. to simulate in full detail the universe because if you do then you you have made an actual universe it's not the simulation right by simulation is in some sense a compression mm -hmm. of information so therefore you lo must lose detail but that point aside if we are able to simulate the entire history of the solar system in excruciating detail i mean it'll be cool but it's not going to be any different from observing it, right. right? Because theoretical understanding, which is what ultimately I'm interested in, um, comes from taking complex things and reducing them down to something that, you know, some mechanism mm -hmm. that you can actually quantify. Um, that's, the, that's the fun part of astrophysics. Mm -hmm. Just kind of simulating things in extreme detail is will cool will make cool visualizations but that doesn't get to doesn't doesn't get you to any better understanding than you had before you did the simulation if you ask very specific questions then you'll be able to uh create like very highly compressed nice beautiful theories about how things evolved and then you can use those to then generalize to other solar systems to uh, other stars and other galaxies and then say something generalizable about the entire universe how difficult would it be to simulate our solar system such that we would not know the difference meaning if we are living in a simulation is there a nice think of it as a video mm, game sure. is there a nice compressible way of doing that or just kind of like you intuited with a three body situation is just a giant mess that you cannot create a video game that uh, will seem realistic without actually building well, universe so, from scratch. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm speculating, but <laughs> one of the, yeah, I know, I know you, like you have a deep understanding of this, uh, but like my, for me, I, I'm, I'm just gonna like speculate that for um, at least, in the types of simulations that we can do today, inevitably you run into the problem of resolution, right? You're, doesn't matter what you're doing, it is discrete. Now, um, the way you would go about asking, you know, if what we're observing, is that a simulation or, uh, or is that, you know, some real continuous thing, uh, is you, you zoom in, right? You zoom in and try and find the, you know, the grid scale, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a really interesting it's a really interesting question, and because the solar system itself, and really, you know, the double pendulum is chaotic, right? Pendulum sitting on another pendulum it moves unpredictably once you let them go. Um, you really don't need to like inject any randomness into a simulation for it to, to give you stochastic and unpredictable answers. Weather is a great example of this. Weather has a lapen of time of, you know, typical weather systems have a lapen of time of a few days. I mean, there's a fundamental reason why the force forecast always sucks, you know, two weeks in advance. It's not that we don't know the equations that govern the atmosphere, we know them well. Their solutions are meaningless though, after a few days. The zooming in thing is very interesting.